So, I just got back from watching Ghost in the Shell 2017, the live action version. My thoughts are still a little bit um, formulating, but in general, I'm actually pretty impressed. Now, I gotta say this from the perspective, I read the original manga, I bought the original version of the manga that came out uh, in America, flopped and, you know, edited. Um, I've watched all of the anime TV series, both Standalone Complex and Second Gig. Um, I've watched both of the original anime films, uh, the original one in Innocence. So I'm pretty well up on the Ghost in the Shell lore. Now, this live action movie is precisely a Hollywood live action version of a another work, right? Anyone going into this, assuming that it is going to be as deep, and I should point out, no spoilers. Anyone going into this, assuming it's going to be as deep and complex as the original works, hasn't seen a lot of Hollywood live-action adaptations before, I can only assume. Um, is it as multi-layered as the original film or standalone complex? No. Um, does it turn it into a simple, corporations are bad fable? Yes. Does it have a an odd anti-technology stance despite being very much based on technology? Yes, that kind of creeps in, that sort of standard Hollywood stuff creeps in. It, it, but it is not, um, but that on screen is section nine. That is the major, that is Bato, and th that is very much um, Aramaki, and that is their world. They manage to realize that world. You know when you go and watch a Hollywood film, especially like a Star Wars movie, and you walk out of the theater and you, you're you still in that world a little bit, and you're looking around, and for a Star Wars movie, you're looking for lightsabers, and you're looking for AT-ATs and all this cool stuff. That's how I felt walking out of the theater watching the Ghost in the Shell live action movie. Now, the plot is significantly different. Um, from any of the current incarnations they use, as you've seen in the trailers, I'm sure, they use some elements from some storylines, but there's also some original stuff in there. And there's a lot of, I don't want to say recycled uh, imagery, but they, they pull in a lot of imagery and scenes and moments from various um, versions, particularly the, the first anime film. Um, again, that's it's a live-action Hollywood adaptation. The idea that it's not going to copy those images when those images are iconic just seems kind of weird to me. So that is extraordinarily well realized. Uh, and that's just going to be part and parcel of what you get in an adaptation. Um, again, no spoilers. Um, the plot is, in general, kind of, I, I want to say kind of simplified. And I, I don't mean that in a, in a really negative sense. I mean, again, it is sort of a it's a live action Hollywood thing. What, what can you do? Um, this is still very much, you know, the, the major in section nine. Um, you will see why some of the images in the trailer look, look a little odd as to who the characters are. Um, uh, but it, it all works as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I've got to give props about the direction of this while copying a lot of imagery from the original works. This does feel like its own thing. It is telling its own story. Um, and and I, I actually backtrack. Um, I got to give props for um, on the direction. This feels like a cohesive work. Despite copying those those images and, and all that stuff, it is integrated into the overall directorial style and nothing feels out of place, really. Um, I, I was very impressed with how everything kind of synchronizes and it does keep moving. Uh, a Ghost in the Shell story can drag watch Innocence sometimes. Um, and this movie did not feel like it did that. There are some quieter moments. There are some um, introspective moments. But that is, that was, I thought, well patterned. Where you have, you know, intensity, rest, intensity, rest. That just kind of makes sense. Um, all your favorite characters are here, although um, not as much as you might think. So the the the, the sm smaller side characters in section nine don't get much screen time, uh, which I think is good. You you don't want to try to do too much at once in a film like this, and they're covering a lot of territory here. So I think that that totally makes sense. Um, you know, I don't know. Again, you kind of you've got to set expectations here. 
Um, this is a live action Hollywood adaptation, so they do the Hollywood thing. It is certainly um, an impressive homage to the original material. I'll give you an idea, I hope this isn't a spoiler. The end credits go over the opening credits, um, the opening music from the first anime film. So that iconic music of the, ah, that is what, what they go into end credits with. So they are very much, you know, respecting of that material. Um, so that was just really pretty impressive. Um, and um, and you know, if you're a fan of Ghost in the Shell, um, as Fisher is pointing out in the chat room, you know, if you're a fan of that, it will come across. Like all that stuff does kind of work. Um, I'm, I'm just kind of generally pretty impressed with all that stuff. So anyway, um, I just realized I'm getting, getting some weird stuff here in terms of uh, visuals. I'm trying to, again, trying to figure out all of this, this stuff. Um, basically, um, one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, there's been a lot of concern about whitewashing in the film. What if I told you that that is actually central or an important plot point in the film? You know, the major not being racially Japanese. I'm just going to put that out there. Um, I'm impressive. I, I'm impressed. It is, it is kind of, kind of um, amazing that we get a film that does as many things as this film does. This is a very expensive film, and it feels like Ghost in the Shell. Like, it's so easy for a special effects film to go off the rails, and this is part of a whole, and it is Ghost in the Shell. So I would say, you know, if we wait for the perfect or for an, an amazing um, Hollywood adaptation of an anime property to come along, none of them are going to make the money to afford that adaptation, right? Hollywood's going to make missteps along the way. Um, I think we need to support things that are, for lack of a better term, good enough, that get many things right, not everything, um, but get a lot of things right and that are so respectful of the source material and that are trying to... I mean, this is the thing. And this this is what, what kind of... It's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm feeling passionate about this. They tell their own story. And they pull in lots of Ghost in the Shell stuff. And it feels Ghost in the Shell. That's impressive. So... I would suggest if you're on the fence, go and see it. Give it a chance. Give it a, a decent opening weekend. Give it some money so that there's at least a chance that it will go somewhere. If this doesn't get the money, just so we're all clear, Hollywood and the execs are not going to take away from that. We should have cast a Japanese actor for Meiji Kusanagi. They're going to say, nobody likes anime films. And so they're going to stop doing this and they're going to make more transformers movies and more sitcom and more you know, romantic comedy films um and they're going to make more stuff that's just kind of big explosions we need more stuff along these lines and i would say see it and then post your review post your comments tell folks what worked and what didn't for you i think that's more helpful to hollywood than folding up your your arms and saying well I don't like this thing, so I'm not going to give them any, any, any of my money. You know what I'm saying? So that's 